Yeah, he came in this order. Let's have yeah, Japan do their uh, top. Like Japan! Oh, Hello! How are you all doing? Pretty good, how are you? Japan! Hey. What's up, Moni? What we got? Good, good, good. Uh, I am Jin Akin. About brain computer interfaces. Um, yeah. We watched the World Cup a couple years back ago. Yeah. Yeah, did you guys see the kickoff that was done uh, by that like, robot guy? No, no, no. I see. Okay. Um, Neymar? Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> long, long story short, there's been like uh, some progress made in brain computer interfaces, and right now, uh, one of the researches that we're working on right now is uh, in conjunction with Jose Carmina at uh, UC Berkeley. And what we're doing is we're creating what's called uh, brain dust, which is nanoparticles which go into the brain. And so you have the brain here, right? So you have this completely line like that, completely line like that, right? And then you have one component up here, which is kind of like the main uh, main network. Uh, and then after that, you have all these little dots all over here to go and attach it to one single neuron. And you have it communicated with via uh, ultrasound. So you have ultrasound that comes in, and the ultrasound also power, powers it, similar to how the PM and crystals are powered. And so it powers these little dust particles to get the sensor uh, inputs, and then they send it back via ultrasound again up to the main device here. And this main device sends it out to a computer that's outside, which can then uh, take in, so this, this can measure abstract thought, for example. So like you want to know like, oh, hey, what is pi plus seven, or even more complex, like what's the integral of one over x from zero to infinity? Right. Uh, you can communicate to that computer, and so the computer receives it, does some computation, and it sends it back in, and this sends it into the neural dust again, and then the, the electrodes are uh, So this is research that's currently going on at uh, UC Berkeley, and our uh, nation, Japan, is investing in this. Uh, that is research. Any questions about this? Dust in the brain? It's, it's not dust, dust, but it, it, it looks like dust. It's like very so fine. Consistent brain software interfacing? Yeah, so what it does is you can just biological simply brain. Yeah. So, given, given that Japan is currently uh, mobilizing their military, uh, are there any uh, applications of this that may be used for, say, mind control or uh, creating some sort of military super soldier? Well, I think uh, that's a great question. I think with any technological advance, there's always a possibility that this could be used for an evil thing. So, uh, just a great example of this is to think back to when nuclear weapons were first developed, right? Nuclear weapons are incredibly uh, uh, damaging technology out there. And in fact, Japan has, has held a very strong uh, opposition to any use of uh, nuclear weapons. But on the other hand, it is also a very useful uh, technology to have because it also gives you the ability to have nuclear power plants and such, which Japan has been supporting. So, although I agree with you that yes, this has certain, uh, certain very nefarious uh, applications, it also has uh, very useful applications to help the everyday person, also the um, person who, you know, is in a business meeting and needs to know something, but, you know, can't take out their phone to text it, or, you know, they need a thought to come in. Uh, yeah, please. How are you um, going to ensure that operation in the center face will be more disruptive or, uh, electrical network? Yeah, yeah. So th that's the reason why from this, so this node up here, that's the main node, right? That's the only node that actually has any electromagnetic uh, components to it. The rest of them are operated effectively just through ultrasound. So they have very minuscule electromagnetic fields to them right? because they have to do some sensory gathering, right? But all the other communication, the ego and the out communication, is done through the ultrasound. Okay, I'm going to do time. Oh, two people. that's such a good one. <laughs> He's doing his research in, in my country. He said UC Berkeley. Yeah. Well, you know, we have to get you're just you off. Right, I'm saying, like, anything you get, I'm getting too, right? If you're doing the research in the US? Uh, right. oh, oh, we got what it. is that? <laughs> okay, you, you want to go up now, US? Yes. Yeah. All right. We're not doing my research in Tokyo or anything. No, I'm <laughs> my research is I should do a lot of research over in Tokyo. I don't know. Sports. Uh, all right. So. Here's what we got going on, fellas. Good to see you all again. Here's, uh, here's the deal. So, we got major breakthroughs in laser targeting systems. It's exciting stuff. Uh, it will help all air travel in space, in the, in the atmosphere, whatever. We got uh, the laser system is built into 
the structure of all different kinds of titanium, of different uh, flight systems, whatever. So essentially, in a full, whatever, 360 uh, spherical, every direction around the uh, the things, you can you can the the machine can sense absolutely everything coming in. It can in super long range. It's great for exploration even, so it's going to help us all. It's not necessarily military, although obviously, like we all know, every science you can make it military if you want. It'll help keep our pilots safe. Super advanced laser targeting system. Boom. Science. Thank you. Questions? Yeah, my man. So it's like a, an intricate network built into the thing. It's, yeah, it takes a lot of power, it takes a lot of energy, but it's not just like, not, not, don't think of those little like lasers all over it like that. It just, it's like a network around that can then extend out. It's crazy. Science. That's it? Awesome. It makes it so good. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Alright, who's next? I hope you just get as busy as It was really yeah, good. First time I did it. Super simple, really easy to achieve, and it does awesome stuff. That's all you need. Cool. What's up? Then uh, next. Alright, cool. Oh. <laughs> this time I didn't pay attention. Yeah, yeah sorry. Right, cool. Hey, so uh, uh, India. Yeah, stick me. Hello. Stick uh, me. Uh, me. India. No. Um, oh. So uh, the, we've uh, India has been doing some uh, breakthroughs in uh, materials research. Uh, we've uh, actually discovered a new um, alloy of uh, gold and titanium that is uh, four times as durable as any other alloy that we have ever discovered before, and. Um, you know, we are looking at applications of this. There's already tons of applications of this in sort of, you know, in health and medical and stuff, but we're looking for it in, in construction and perhaps uh, applying the same uh, principles that are used with the gold and titanium uh, ions into uh, perhaps using other um, uh, other atoms of other things to create another matrix, perhaps like uh, using graphene or using other types of, uh, of matrices to create something that's even stronger and uh, are looking to apply this and finally being able to create uh, space elevators. You know, we've, we've been uh, working on finding materials that have been strong enough to create space elevators uh, for ages now and uh, this uh, matrix might actually be the breakthrough we need to uh, be able to finally, finally create them. So uh, that's uh, pretty exciting news. Does anybody have any questions? Yes. Yeah, so I understand that you're trying to make this alloy. My question is, will you be using any of the red mercury that you found in the mines in India? Uh, we actually have not been, uh, been mining any red mercury. Uh, that uh, has been done without our knowledge by foreign government. We're still trying to find out who did the mining, but it wasn't us. So uh, we haven't been experimenting with it, obviously, because we haven't been mining it. So, uh, uh, well, uh, considering that Japanese uh, aircraft have been coming into our country without of our knowledge several times, uh, it, uh, it, it really kind of begs the question, doesn't it? You know, I, I, I don't think Japan's really the person to ask. I think so, Japan is a fair person to ask since you've given us escorts into your country. Uh, Get hot in here! You <laughs> Sorry, science, sorry, science, you're right. No, no, no. I, you know, listen, uh, I, I can't, I can't reveal that information considering you've, you've mobilized against it. So, you know, sorry, all, all spare in love and war, but this is war. <laughs> 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 I thought this was science. Uh, it is, but also war. You know. Are space elevators on it? Space elevators. Yeah, sorry. They are not. They're not. Okay, that's fine. No worries. Yeah, all right. So, any other questions? Neat. Fabulous. Cool.